The, the curriculum there was such that we were bonding um, with other individuals uh, uh, trying to seek recovery and um, the, the uh, staff, great staff, uh, professionals, both from the spiritual side as well as the, uh, the counseling and mental health side, uh, and probably more importantly, a lot of the medical side, make sure that we were safe and, and that we were, as we went through our detox and so forth. Um, but they set us out on a course of um, recovery that was pretty specific, dealt with the, um, the AA <coughs> programs, the 12-step recovery, and everything um, from the intimacy of, um, of roommates that we had, intimate scenarios. I still stay in touch with my two roommates uh, from back there and, and see how their life is and how they're doing. And so it, it, it's a very a close um, sort of um, environment, but then we also have the group counseling where we're sharing um, with everybody else and pretty, in, pretty um, intense um, therapies, but what the doctor really ordered, and, and it worked well for me. I was very comfortable with it, and um, I, I just can't say enough good things about the, the staff, the location, and the experience. It's, it's just very special. I recognized that the intervention was, was out of love and care and concern and it wasn't uh, people trying to um, dictate uh, their will to me. So I, I recognized that and said it's done for the right reasons, this seems like a reasonable thing to do. I'll figure out the, uh, the employment situation and um, contacted the company I was working with and the boss I had and he just sort of said uh, I didn't realize you had an issue and go do what you need to do and things will be here when you get back and uh, don't worry about it just get well so it was it was quite uh, uh, astounding everybody was wanting me to, to, to go to treatment so I did and uh, with mo no malice towards family or friends so while I was there I was others that had been through intervention, I was asked to pair up with them as like a big brother because most people that have been through intervention are angry and mad because they're still in denial. And uh, I just was able to provide that example and that buffer to them that no, your family did it because they loved you and they want you to be happy and they want you to be around. So I was able to serve even when I was trying to get healthy. And I think that's an, a very important part of uh, recovery is, is, is service uh, in whatever form you can provide. So the intervention was, um, was um, probably the knock at the door that, hey, it's time, you need to. And so it was like, okay, the problem's there, let's go fix it. And Hazel and Springbrook was the fortunate uh, choice for me. The first impression of um, my treatment when I walked on the uh, Springbrook Brook campus was, you know, this, it is a beautiful place, it's a nice setting, it feels like a safe setting for me. I um, asked some basic questions, the, the um, I, I f felt like um, the way it was laid out clinically and coming from a medical family, it, it just was pretty um, clear to me that, that they were taking me to a detox to make sure that uh, as I went through, my body expelled those spirits and, and um, the alcohol out of the system that I didn't have some sort of uh, trauma that might be life-threatening and so that initial and they're very clear about all of that and it's like okay it, it went quite smoothly for me which doesn't necessarily uh, I found out later go that smooth for a lot of people so it was like okay maybe um, um, 
and they have you in a safe environment uh, while you go through that detoxing. And once you've moved beyond that, um, then into the general population, but um, you get that height, heightened sense of um, safety because the medical practitioners are watching out to make sure I don't have some sort of a adverse reaction as my body adjusts to um, no alcohol. Life is, is, is very good, but life is life. Um, they're still dealing with the daily um, opportunities or problems related to personal, professional, um, uh, regional, state, national, things are still, international, things are, are still there. It's just, um, you know, able to deal with them on a clear, with a clear mind and don't have to reach for a drink to try to uh, anesthetize my feelings or anything. Uh, and I think that in the groups that I um, am with, AA groups, and we have a lot of discussions, it isn't easy, but it is what it is. And it's um, much clearer to be, uh, to have a clear mind and uh, in dealing with all those problems. But there's still issues that uh, are, we're gonna have to deal with every day. I felt good. I was just there for 28 days and felt like I had gotten what I um, had set out to, to get and I didn't fight um, the whole concept. I embraced it, not only my concept of a higher power of God, <clears throat> but that I was there, I surrendered and I was there to, to learn a way to live that was better, saner than what I had been living. So there wasn't a battle for me. And so when I left, it was like, okay, this is what you do with the problem. You go seek out the best professional uh, advice that you can get. And I felt like I got that uh, at Hazel and Springbrook. And then you move on with your life. So it was optimistic. Uh, it was going to be some changes. and. And uh, I got a lot of feedback from people like, mm, where were you? And I was very open and upfront. And people, you're not hiding anything from people. They know what's going on in this world. And everybody was just so supportive. And even those that were looking at treatment themselves, wanting to know some, you know, how was it? What was it like? You know, what would I expect? So I, I was, kind of thrown back in and I, I had no um, fear of, of where I'd been. I didn't try to hide it. Um, and I think that's a, a big part of accepting your, your issues and problems is <clears throat> they are what they are. And you, know, you read about it every day. Either people deal with their problems or they, they die. This is a real one. The accountability and no responsibility um, that um, w we have in the relationship um, in terms of recovery is w we both have some of that responsibility. It's not just for you as the or the clinicians to give me a shot, give me a pill, give me a drink that, that takes this craving away and makes me all better. I have to really want that and be held accountable for um, my behavior. Now, if I'm not responsible and held accountable for bad behavior, the courts get involved and there's incarceration and there's other things. So it, it's pretty simple um, to me that, um, you know, it's, and, and it's clearly laid out that what we will do for you um, as a, a treatment center at the Hazel and Betty Ford um, organizations, here's what we'll do. But you also have to be a part of that because we can't change you. You can only change you. And I, I think that knowing that uh, it's like, okay, I have to do something. Those people that, and I've met, that go from treatment center to treatment center that continue to have the cravings, continue to, to relapse. Um, it, it, you're going to have to change yourself and the tools that you decide to accept from 
wherever you go, um, you, you need to put in a chest and be willing to reach into that tool chest when you need it and, and not just go back to your former behavior. So accountability is, is, uh, and responsibility are critical to know where they, they are between the individual and, and the treatment center. One of the biggest is, uh, of course, the um, Worldwide Alcoholics Anonymous program, the 12-step programs that um, were developed in the 30s by um, back in Akron that uh, were taught um, are everywhere. And, and so there's people out there, there's resources, um, there's hotlines. With the, the thing I really like about the Hazelden program is there's alumni pretty much everywhere, domestically and in a lot of cases internationally. So I've been, as in my sobriety, I've been called by people that have said, hey, I'm just getting out of treatment. Um, I was told that I could call you and, and, and I'll pick it up from there and say, sure, um, let's plan, let's meet, let's talk, and um, we'll get to a meeting together and we'll develop, um, we'll help you out. And so that short-term um, integration back into society, if you will, <clears throat> out of the um, treatment facility is, is a major step for individuals. It's where do I go? How do I do this? And so um, the alumni within the program are there to help. And they help transition people into that, okay, what do I do? You get them to meetings. You get them around more people that have walked in the same shoes that they have and so the um, all the different alumni sponsored events um, that have come about help get you back around a community of people in recovery that if you feel like you have a need for that drug or that drink or that smoke whatever was your drug of choice um, there's phone numbers, there's emails, there's all kinds of people within the organization you can call and and get some help. Um, the, the, the communities around the country have embraced this from down to the, the, to the high schools, to the colleges now, and recognizing that we have problems uh, beyond just um, adults, but it's going at, at all ages and and ranges within the population. So it, it's a whole community to itself there to help.